What's up, influencers? That's right. We've got 10 tips for small channels that want brand deals. And I've been on YouTube for over 10 years, and my wife and I, we have multiple channels, and there's all kinds of ways to monetize, but the best way we've been able to monetize our channels for our content is through brand deals. We've been sponsored literally hundreds of times, and I've been able to have a lifestyle around what I'm passionate about because I've been able to connect brands to my audience through my content. So today, we'll be talking about the 10 tips that I've got for you guys to do it because I know some of you are starting right now. If you guys are just getting started, hit that like button. Um, keep in mind, we will be doing a Q&A at the end, but my question for you is this. What is your dream brand deal? Mine is Coca-Cola. When I first started, I always wanted to work with Coca-Cola. I want to know what's your dream brand that you want to work with. Also, for creators who have more experience, let us know what has been your favorite brand that you've worked with. All right. Now we're going to jump right into the tips. Tip number one is have a niche channel. And this is the thing. When you're first starting out, you know, don't discount having a small audience. As long as that audience is the right audience, and the way you do that is having a niche channel. Make sure that the content you're creating is gonna set you apart from other channels. And here's a little tip from Sean about niche channels right here. The more focused and niche your channel is, the better. We've actually talked a lot about this on Video Influencers and the power of having a niche is that if you just kind of have a general channel that's not about really anything, then you can't really prove that your audience is interested in say just one thing and that is fashion or just one thing and that is pets and everything to do with pets. And when you have a focused niche, even if your channel's not very large, brands are more likely to work with you because they know that your subscribers and your audience and your viewers is watching a channel of focused niche content. So the thing I would add to that is remember, when it comes to the brand standpoint, if they've got something they want to sell or a service they want to get exposed or they just want to promote their brand, uh, the more niche that audience is, the better. And that's why it starts with a niche channel. Example of this is, say, your gardening channel. You guys know I love gardening, right? And there's all kinds of gardening channels. But maybe your gardening channel that specifically uh, focuses on organic gardening. The more niche you are, the more likely as a small channel, you'll be able to connect with not just brands, but especially smaller brands that might have a budget to sponsor your content, um, but they can't work with a bigger, the cr bigger creator. So maybe they need a micro influencer like yourself. So that is the tip. If you guys like that tip, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, let's move on to tip number two, quality content. Now this is pretty obvious, we talk about this all, time, all the time, but remember, quality content leads to quality views. And it's so important to have content up on your channel that represents not just uh, what you're pitching, but what you actually do. Because you wanna make sure that when a brand looks at your channel, that that first impression is a good impression. Now, don't get me wrong, if you started a year ago or a couple of years ago, um, or even like six months ago and those first few uploads weren't like to the level of quality that you would want, that's all good. Just make sure the the quality, the content that you've been uploading recently kind of speaks to those uh, sponsorships that you want to pitch to brands. So quality content is very, very important because that first impression when you're pitching is important as well. All right, the next tip here is know your value. Now, this is a thing. Keep in mind, when you're creating content, there is a raw value in that video itself, without the views, without your audience. A brand, when they wanna create content or make a video, sometimes it can cost thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So keep in mind, as a content creator, you're doing something that has a value in itself because they would have to hire a studio or maybe they do have an in-house person, but again, they're on their payroll. You're doing something that is not just gonna be valued to them, but is a huge value in this industry of digital marketing in itself. 
Also, remember, on the flip side, you have an audience, even if it's a small audience. This is, again, why it's important to have a niche channel so you have a, a niche audience. That audience you're creating, most brands, they don't want to spend the time to develop that uh, digital audience. Now, don't get me wrong. A brand or a company or business, they probably already have customers, but the difference is you have an audience that's lined up with your content in a way that uh, brands can only dream of. There are brands out there now that have audiences and have following, but remember, your audience is very specific to you as a content creator, and that value of content creation and your ability to engage with them is huge. So when you think about this, even when you're starting out with a small channel, you have something to offer the brands that they want, which is, which is not just the content, but the audience that's connected to that content that they don't want to spend the money to develop. So keep that in mind. Uh, just want to give a shout out to everybody that's watching. Uh, let's uh, check out who's in the chat areas. Marshall, what's up? An Analyn, Winnie, Six, BB, Scratchin. What's up, you guys? Uh, leave a comment, hit that like button. We're gonna get to Q and A at the end here. But the next tip is this: understand how to sell. Now, so often, hold on a second. I have to get a drink of water here. We are live, you guys. So often, when you're trying to get a brand deal or get sponsored, you're always thinking about me and getting paid and how what's my rate and what's in it for me remember the way you sell to anybody but especially a brand that you want to pitch your uh your channel to is what is in it for them what you're going to do is pitch to them specifically the type of audience they can connect with why your content is going to help them sell their service or uh, promote their product or get their brand out there to the right audience if you think from that standpoint it's going to help you so much when you're pitching to brands in addition to that, one really quick tip is have a media kit. So a media kit, all it is is it's kind of a write-up. You can a one pager. The more simple it is, the better. A one-page PDF that shows people, you know, not only what your channel is about, how how many followers you have, but who are the followers that follow your channels? Who subscribe to your channel? What's their age? Are they female? Are they males? Um, what are they into? Uh, what part of the world they're from? What city they're from? The more specific you can get, especially early on in your YouTube journey, the better. Have that on that media kit, and that's going to be very helpful when we move on to tip number, where are we at, actually? I forget. Tip number five. Let me see here. Are we at tip number five? Uh, yes, tip number five, which is reach out. So this is where you need to pitch to brands. And so you take that media kit, you take the understanding of what's in it for the brand, and you start emailing. You know, it reminds me of when I first started on YouTube with my wife, Judy. Uh, we had a vlog channel with just getting started, and we were going to get married. Now this is early, we're talking about 2010, 2011, before influencer marketing was a, was a thing. We had a wedding series that, funny enough, Sean and I want to produce together. And what I literally did was, I went to the brand's websites or their social media. I tried, in fact, back then, there wasn't a lot of social media going on for the brands. I would get their customer service phone number and I would just start dialing for dollars or finding their emails and sending that media kit, which again, funny enough, Sean made my first media kit, right? Because I didn't have any skills, but I would just pitch that. And I would pitch that uh, that wedding series to all these different brands that align with that content and the audience that we had. And I'll tell you, you're gonna have to pitch a lot. For every hundred, for every hundred, you might literally have one brands say yes only a few actually acknowledging that you're reaching out especially when you're a smaller channel but that's okay because in that process of reaching out and pitching to brands you're going to start learning what's important to them right and you're going to get better you know the thing is when i first called i had to kind of like make up what i was doing I, I had no idea like who i was reaching out to i would sometimes just say like can i uh be connected to your digital marketing department can i be connected to your social media manager before that was even a thing because I was just trying to reach out to whoever would 
consider my pitch. And over time, it got better and better. And actually, um, that wedding series created so many opportunities where like our wedding was basically half paid for by brands that we were working because of that content I was creating. So start pitching up to brands and know that it's going to take a lot of work, but it's absolutely worth it. All right. Next tip is this, the follow-up. Now this is kind of, it goes along with the last tip, which is uh, make sure you're starting to pitch to brands and a lot of brands, but there's a sales number that's really key that I remember from my real estate days as an agent. Sometimes it takes seven hits before you get one yes. And what that means is that first email, that's one hit. That that second phone call, that's another hit. That, uh, maybe like a, a follow-up email after that, that's the third hit. Sometimes you gotta hit up uh, these people seven times. Keep in mind too, especially at brands, uh, or whoever's representing the brand, there's a lot of turnover. There's people quitting their jobs. So that first person you pitched out to might not even be there. And by the sixth time you've uh, reached out to them, it's a whole nother person. So that follow up is so important. Remember at the end of the day, especially you guys, you can uh, relate to this. We're really busy and are a attention is being inundated by so many things. So sometimes just being top of mind means uh, repetitively connecting with people and reminding them, hey, this is my channel, this is my content, I believe your brand would do well uh, in my content because the audience that aligns with your guys' product, business, or brand. So keep that in mind, follow-up is so key when it comes to selling your idea for a brand sponsorship. All right, next one is network. Now this is a little bit different than uh, pitching to brands because what I mean by networking is you want to network with people in the industry. One thing I want to disclose is most brands don't actually work with influencers directly. They hire agencies, whether it's a PR company or it's a digital, digital advertising firm or some kind of influencer agency, and you want to network with those people. Now, in your, your, in your I guess, uh, efforts to pitch your uh, channel for brand sponsorships, you might meet these people. But another place where you can actually meet a lot of these people is at events like VidCon. So um, industry events like uh, this upcoming week, I'm gonna be in Dallas with Sean and we're gonna be speaking at Video Marketing World. That is a more industry professionals event. Smaller in numbers, I think it's like a few hundred people gonna be there, but the people that are gonna be there are not just uh, uh, brands, but the agencies that represent the brands, the decision makers or the gatekeepers to those discussions for brand opportunities, uh, sponsorships for your channel. So you wanna network with them. In addition to that is you wanna network with other influencers. Because this is the thing, other influencers are already probably working with brands and it's important to create those relationships, become friends with them because you never know, they might refer you to the brands or refer the brands to you. The point here is just network with as many people and remember, you know, it's a lot of work to create content and upload to YouTube and build an audience and uh, manage your social media and do that over and over and over. But it's that extra little bit of hustle that is so important. It actually reminds me of one of my favorite creators, Andrew Edwards. This is Andrew What's Edwards, Gear Live, Andrew Edwards or Live uh, uh, Gearlive.com is his website. But he is a tech influencer um, that is just crushing it. And I've seen him at many events. Now, I'll tell you this. He's got a legit tech channel, but it's relatively small for the kind of opportunities he gets. He gets amazing brand deals. And I believe one of the ways he does it is because he networks. I'm not kidding you. Every time I go to an event, he's always there. He's talking to brands. He's connecting with agencies. And he's becoming friends with other influencers. So uh, we just happen to live in the same area in the uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, north of Seattle. But he is all over the country at all these different events because he understands those relationships are powerful and don't discount the power of networking. All right, moving on to the next tip. Understand the market value. Now, simply put, you want to make sure you, you know how much 
influencers are charging for posts when they work with brands and how much brands are paying influencers. I guess that's one in the same thing, but sometimes it can be different depending on uh, the dynamic of the deals. Uh, the point being, make sure you do your research. Now, one simple way of doing this is go to socialbluebook.com input your channels and they're going to pump out a number for how much sponsorships should cost. Now, what I'll tell you is this, a better, better uh, research source is connecting with those influencers. Better than that is from your effort of pitching and people saying no and the yeses and you have an experience with working with brands, you're gonna start understanding the value. Now, one of my friends who's also a family vlogger, he actually explains it best when it comes to understanding your value and the importance of it when it comes to brand deals, especially as a small channel. And then one of the other huge things you gotta consider is what are you worth? Yeah. If you don't know what you're worth, I mean, you think of if you were doing a negotiation for a yep. car or a house, if you have no idea what the value of that car or house is, yeah. how can you negotiate? You have no leverage, yeah. no power. Yeah. And so there's several tools that can help you to know what you're worth. Yeah. And the biggest thing is asking around. I mean, that's one of Absolutely. the things, if you've never done deals and you don't know, you need to start talking to people. Yeah. You can talk to consultants. I mean, that's one of the huge things. It's been worth it to me to reach out to people like Benji and say, what is the value for this? Because yeah. they see so many more deals and so many more things. You know, with our law firm being an attorney handling a lot of deals, yeah. people reach out to us for that kind of yeah. stuff too. I know you guys are loving my long hair there. <clears throat> that was a weird phase in my life. But that was Jeremy from J House Vlogs, one of the most successful creators I know. And he works with a lot of brands. But one of the things I love about Jeremy is that he was hustling from the beginning before he was a big channel. I remember meeting him at a Seattle event called Vlogger Fair. Literally, when he had less than 5,000 subscribers, he was reaching out to me, he was connecting with me. Now, he didn't have this weird hidden motive. He just wanted to connect because he knew that he wanted to do what my wife and I were doing at the time, and he could learn a lot. And I'll tell you this, we both learned a lot from each other. Point being, networking is very important, but knowing the market value came from discussions we both had with each other. Oftentimes I'm calling him saying, Hey, how much have you charged this brand? And he'll call me. He's like, what do you think about this deal? Like what is the value of these posts? So understand your value because the last thing I'll say is when you do pitch to brands, having an understanding of what it costs is going to help you price your pitch correctly. Cause the closer you are to what the market value is, the better. Now, I'm not saying everybody should charge the same amount because say you have a, a much more quality audience and your, your, uh, your channel is very niche, you might be able to charge a lot more. But when you're starting out, you have to have kind of like a guide and understanding the market value through a social blue book and other influencers is a great way to start. All right, moving on. We're really close here. Uh, T Cobbs Eats, thank you for the $2 uh, super chat. You guys, uh, we're always grateful for your guys' support. And make sure you leave your comments because we're going to try to answer some at the end. All right, next tip, social media stalking. Now, this is really simple. This actually came from a, uh, a person we interviewed on, here on this channel. Named Lee, his name is Liron Segev. He's a tech YouTuber, and he says social media stalking. Now, that sounds kind of creepy, but what he's saying is follow the brands that you want to work with. Engage with them like their comments, reply back to them, start a conversation. This is a great way to pitch the brand without being too salesy. Because remember, you just want to be top of mind. You want to uh, be on their attention radar. And the way you do this and not just follow them, but you engage with them consistently. Now, it might take a year before you ever have that conversation of a brand sponsorship. So start now, don't just simply pitch people because you want a brand deal. Like, show them that you have an honest love and appreciation for their brand, their products, uh, their services, so that you have a little bit of context when you do get to that discussion. I know that a lot of brand deals happen because I love those brands and brands have reached out to me because they see I'm using those products. So it's so important if maybe like you're not on their radar to at least have understanding of how they market, how they reach out to people and what's important to them. You know, that that's kind of a win window into their strategy. When you look at their social media handles and what they're posting, that is what they're thinking is strategically 
in-house in any way, again, you can help them. Remember, you want to see it from their point of view, not what you're going to get from it, but what they're going to get from it. So social media stalking, super important. And let's go ahead and move on. You guys, get your free bonus at tubesecretsbook.com. There's some advanced training videos there, and we would love to additionally help you in addition to these brand deals. Um, also wanted to give a shout out to June Boutique, $5 super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move on. We're almost here to the very last tip. What I wanna say to you is this when it comes to brand deals. Uh, I've been able to do brand deals before it was even a thing just because I understood the value of attention and that people pay tons of money for their business to get in front of an audience. So remember, we already talked about creating content and the audience that you're engaged with. There's a huge value to it, even as a smaller YouTuber. You know, in the beginning, you know, a uh, um, uh, dollar saved is a dollar earned. Maybe you're not getting an actual brand sponsorship, you're just getting free products. But if it's something that you would have spent money on, technically, you kind of made money because you didn't have to spend money on that product. So you've got to hustle at the beginning, but more importantly, you got to believe that it's possible. I've talked to so many channels, sometimes that have less than a thousand subscribers that get free products or less than 10,000 subscribers and get brand deals. Sean and I, early on, when we had less than 15,000 subscribers, we worked with a huge, huge app that Ex they did exactly this. They actually matched up uh, influencers with brands to do brand deals. And because of you, the uh, video influencer audience, that made sense for them. So even uh, uh, less than 15,000 subscribers when we first got started, we had a significant sponsorship. That brand was actually FameBit. All right. Last but not least is this. Know when to say no. I got to give a, a shout out to Gabby the uh, lead producer here on the show. And I love this point or this tip. Know when to say no. And the point here is quality over quantity. Now I know it's tempting to work with every single person that says yes to something you pitch, but make sure it's the right kind of deal. Now I'm assuming everybody you pitch to is gonna be brands you wanna work with. So this is a, not just for those deals, but even in the future as you get a bigger audience and you start getting presented with the opportunities, you don't, don't, you don't wanna just like inundate your audience with sponsorships all day. Just ask yourself, when you've watched a influencer who's got a YouTube channel that's doing sponsorship after sponsorship, you kind of get fatigued by that. You almost get numb to that and you don't want that to happen. You always want to be bringing the freshest, best, and most relevant sponsorships to your audience because again, the one thing I didn't mention is think about your audience. We talked about thinking about the brands, right? But think about your audience, what makes sense for them. For my wife and I on our vlog channel, it's Judy's Life. We're always working with brands that either we love or with brands, companies, or products that we know would be valuable for our audience. Because at the end of the day, it is our business model. We work with a lot of brands, but we don't work with too much. Actually, our ability to say no to the wrong deals is probably what's given us the longevity and been able to help us raise the rates. The other benefit of knowing when to say no is you can start charging higher rates because you're gonna be a premium channel where you work with less brands, maybe more significant brands or brands that are more connected with your audience because you're a niche channel rather than just working with anybody. Now, ironically, my dream brand was Coca-Cola, right? Which a very universal I haven't had that but it's all good like I'm not like desperate I've never pitched coca-cola I just mentioned it because that was one of the brands that stood out because they have such a huge marketing budget but again the reason it's made sense for us to uh, work with the brands is because we're always thinking about the audience so that's the last thing I'll say I know brand deals is something you've heard of being a big thing. Obviously, if you follow any influencer with a large audience, they're getting sponsored left and right. But at the end of the day, you have to always keep in mind what is good for your audience. Whew, that was a lot. All right, you guys. So if you guys uh, didn't know, 
YouTube Secrets is out right now. That's right, and it's out on audiobook. So go to Audible. Uh, I love all the Amazon reviews we've been getting on this book. Your responses with the hashtag YouTube Secrets on social media is awesome. So we're gonna quickly go into Q and A. Um, Sarah's Bites, thank you for the ten dollar super chat. We really appreciate your support. Um, and Sarah says, I never would have taken the leap to share my passion for cooking on YouTube without you and Sean. You guys are awesome. Well, you're awesome, Sarah. Even before the super chat, I'm glad that you took the leap. And for anybody else watching, let's set aside brand deals right now. You know, I talk about having belief in yourself to know the value that you're bringing to the market with your videos, but have belief in yourself generally and have the courage. In fact, the first chapter of YouTube Secrets is courage because, you know, over 10 years ago when I first started, when my wife was uploading, I would have never thought this would be my life where I'm working with some of the biggest brands um, in our industry and having this lifestyle around what we're passionate about and a, a big part too uh, because of brand deals. But now I totally believe it. And this is what the backbone of this channel, Video Influencers. We want to make sure you guys also believe it and know that there is opportunity out there. So um, quick question, and then we're going to actually wrap this up, you guys. Um, I'm going to the doc right now. Whitney asks, how do you know uh, you can actually trust the company that you want to work with? Great question. So um, how do you know you can trust a company? Now, the number one piece of advice is always get it in writing. Make sure you take the time to sign an agreement because if you don't, it doesn't matter, right? It's like literally just trusting their word. So always hire an attorney or get some kind of legal support. Sometimes you might not be able to afford it, right? So hopefully you've got an attorney friend or somebody that's got some background in this. Again, this is another reason why it's important to connect with the other influencers because they might be able to help you read the contracts. So uh, the last thing I'll say on that is make sure you read your contracts, okay? I've met so many influencers that get screwed because they're not reading what's in the agreement. Um, so that is the number one you trust by not trusting them and relying on the agreement. Okay, go on to the next question. Uh, uh, marriage WTF. We are beginners and have zero clue as to how this works. I'm assuming we wait until we have a good YouTube following. Will potential sponsors contact us? When do we reach out to them? Thanks. Great question because I'm sure a lot of you watching this also are just starting out or maybe haven't started yet. I would say in the beginning, don't worry so much about sponsorships or making money. You have to be committed to creating quality content. That's why I think that was like uh, tip number two, which is create quality content because that is this is going to be the backbone of the success in getting into those brand deals. Yes, you will eventually be contacted by people, especially if you're a niche channel and you're very focused and clear on your content. So, uh, and uh, eventually you'll know when you want to reach out to people. I wouldn't give you an actual number of subscribers because every channel is going to be a little bit different. You just have to make sure that you're always putting your viewers or future subscribers first before money because the money will follow as cliche as that sounds. When you follow your passion, the money follows. And the people, the reason people subscribe to your channel isn't because you're working with brands. The reason people subscribe to your channel is the value you're delivering through your content. All right, you guys, make sure you hit up our playlist where we talk about brand deals, not only uh, through uh, uh, tips videos with me and Sean, but other influencers that we've interviewed. If you wanna see all of our videos, click on the playlist right at the bottom of the screen or in the card for more of those. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, say, I hope you guys have a great week and you create uh, you continue creating great content and I'll talk to you later. But before that, let me answer a few more questions. Okay. All right. So, um, cake all, uh, G's, uh, gives us a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. New business channel here. Thanks for all your help. You're welcome. Thank you for the super chat. All right. Uh, uni, une, boutique. You guys got some 
interesting names here. Would would you do a video on how to make a media kit, please? Thank you. That's actually a great uh, idea. I would love to make a video on that uh, one of these days. Chris, we need to put that on the to-dos uh, because a media kit is really important. So real quick, going back to the media kit, what that is, it's basically a one pager describing what your channel is all about and what you have to offer. So simply put, you put a little description about your channel, uh, put a couple thumbnails of different videos you've done, how many subscribers you have, how many s followers on social media, describe your demographics, so that's like uh, males and female ratio, the age ranges, where people are watching from, and a few uh, things about your content that would be relevant for the brands. All right, that was a lot. Anyways, Thank you so much for spending time here on Saturday morning. I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' success stories, and I will talk to you later.